Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Turbo and I'm going to be showing you, myself, water cooling a GTX NVIDIA GTX Titan X. So here's all my cooling parts. There's the radiator, the Titan X uh, water cooling block from EK. That is the white coolant, which is pastel colored, very, very milky looking. It should be quite good. And that is the Phobia water cooling pump. I got something quite simple and small because I didn't want to go all out because I'm only cooling the GPU. I didn't need to spend too much money because enough money was spent already on all these parts. So roll those credits and we'll get on with the video. Alright guys, let's have a closer look at some of the parts that I bought. So this is the water block for the Titan. It also fits the GTX 980, which is what I used to have. And it's very nice, it's very shiny on the back there, look, where it says Titan X. So this is the water cooling block that goes on top of the graphics card, replacing the stock cooler. And just at the top there, you can see the channels. This is where all the coolant will be running. So it's a shame systems aren't mounted the other way up to see that better when it's in the system. So this is the radiator. This takes two or four 120 millimeter fans, which my case happens to have already at the front. Uh, if I hold this up a bit better, you might, you might get to see through the thin fins there where the air will be blowing through and cooling down the coolant as it travels down those channels. So yeah, I went for the slim style radiator to take up as little space in the system as possible. Here we are in the system, I'm just going to give you a really quick run through of what's in my system in case you already didn't know. So I already have a built-in water cooling system there, a sealed unit with some fans and a push-pull configuration at the top. That's the cooler there. I'm going to be dusting out this system, guys. Look at all that dust at the back and dust up there as well. So I'm going to be giving this a clean, spring clean, as well as remove the GTX Titan there. Uh, this space down here is where my cooling pipes and whatnot are going to go. And at the front there, I'm going to be mounting my radiator in front of those fans. And that is pretty much the gist of it, guys. So let's move on. So I had some old water cooling uh, stuff. So I'm going to make use of some of this stuff instead of purchasing some more stuff. So in my old system, I used to have two of these that are still in pretty decent condition. Uh, and these are going to act as reservoirs. That's basically what they are. It's just cylinder reservoirs. So I didn't need to buy anything extra. And I'm not going to sure. I'm, I'm not going to be sure really about how I'm going to go about doing this. But I, I think I'll probably just end up using one, and just have one stood up, because I, I don't really need to use two. Two would be overkill. I'm only cooling one GPU after all at the end of the day. So I, I think I'll just use one and use some of these old fittings as well after I've given them a polish and a clean. So here's the GPU guys. Yes indeed I've got to take apart all these goddamn screws and there's about 20 of them. Big ones, small ones, some as big as your head. No there isn't any as big as your head. But yeah, so I'm gonna get on with that and spare you, uh, spare you me taking it apart bit by bit. So just to show you the stock cooler again because it is a massive graphics card, it must be said. It is a really long, very wide graphics card. So one of the advantages of water cooling is taking up a little less space. So here you go, guys. I managed to get the cover off, which is the scariest part of the video, really. And there's a little bit of thermal paste remaining and some thermal pads, as you can see, which I'll have to take off and uh, clean off some of that old grease. And if I... Pick it up a little bit, you can see the actual graphics card is incredibly wafer thin. So when you're prizing that uh, stock cooler off, it is incredibly nerve wracking. I've done it a few times now and it doesn't get any easier. So I've got to put this on the top. And as you can see, with that also being thin, it's going to take up a little less space. So guys, moment of truth. I've done all the boring stuff with the screws there. And there you have it. It's still a big graphics card, but it's a little bit thinner. 
like it's been on a diet or something. And because it's see-through, I'm going to be able to see the coolant going around. I'm going to be able to see that it's flowing. I'm going to be able to see the color as well. You can see some of the uh, resistors or transistors there. And you can see into the channels where the coolant will be going. And just for a size comparison, in a second, I will show you the stock cooler next to this. And if the camera manages to focus, there we go, you can see the cat is a lot thinner now. So if you were doing SLI or Crossfire, for example, this would save you space as well as cool. So that is what the cooler looks like now. And there's the stock one. So yeah, there is there is a discernible size difference there. Uh, it's also, it is quite aesthetically pleasing, apart from the giant green letters that say <laughs> GeForce GTX. But yeah, I'm not I'm not going to miss that. I will keep it though. So here it is inside the system. It's not hooked up yet, but it will be soon. And as you can see, it is taking up a lot less space and it just looks a lot better. Half of water cooling is the aesthetics as well as the boost in uh, temperature scores. So I had a problem. Um, the 120 mil fans on the front of my PC are actually 140 mil, but I've found a solution temporarily, which is to mount the radiator on the back here and keep the 140 mil fans on the front, and it's going to blow through the radiator just fine, even with a little bit of extra air uh, <laughs> coming out at the top there. So it's not perfect, but at least it's not uh, completely ruined. So here it is running, guys. I've been uh, doing a leak test. I've been running for a while. You can see all my old um, bits power part fittings, I believe they used to be called. I don't know if they're still working uh, bits power, but yeah, they made some really nice fittings. And yes, I've uh, got a bit of kitchen roll there, just in case there's any leaky leaks. But so far, everything has been running really, really nicely. And it looks pretty dandy too. So here we are on my desktop, guys. I've got my Fermac stress tester open here and also MSI Afterburner for overclocking and checking what my temperatures are doing. It's a pretty nifty tool, really recommend it. So as you can see here, the stress, the stress test thing is just for completely loading your graphics card. It doesn't particularly do any graphical tests or anything. It literally just puts your GPU under full load so you can get a, a temperature readout or if you're uh, stress testing your overclock, this is the kind of program they use. So as you can see here, my temperatures are now incredibly low. I used to uh, idle about this temperature, but once full usage was happening, it was jumping up to 86 degrees. And now it doesn't get anywhere near about 45. So that is a vast improvement. I'm already incredibly happy with that. Uh, the only thing is, uh, there was an update for the NVIDIA drivers today, so while I have done a modest core clock speed overclock of 200Hz, I can't actually increase the memory overclock, which is, is strange, but at least I've got that core clock overclock going on there. For some reason now, even if I try to, it just it undoes it straight away. Before I updated the drivers, I did have a 300Hz uh, overclock on the memory. Um, but at least I can get the core clock going for now, which is great. So I've already got some extra juice out of my GTX Titan X and just wonderful temperatures. I'm actually quite astounded by how much cooler it is. But yeah, that's perfect. And, and an idle temperature of about 30 degrees and I'm not even hitting 50 under full load and an overclock. So I'm going to run Fermac now. So you're going to see this wonderful spinning donut -y thing which is putting 100% load or 99-98% load on my GPU. So as you can see I'm running at 2560 by 1440p so call it 2k and you can see there I've zoomed in a little bit at the bottom there for, for uh, mobile users to be able to see this in full detail that the GPU 1 which is my NVIDIA GT4, GeForce GTX Titan X is running and the cores are looking good obviously I can't overclock the memory anymore which is unfortunate but I'm not even hitting 45 degrees after running a standard one minute burning test 
and after leaving it running for even longer I'm not getting over 45 degrees that's at full load and an overclock guys this has been a very worthy endeavor and I am very very happy with the results so as you can see here in that zoomed in picture I am a happy man so here's the system all ready to go guys ready for gaming ready for editing I'm gonna get some lighting to go in there to some white LEDs just to light it up a little bit so you can actually see the innards going so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it hope you learned a little bit and I'll see you guys in the next video very soon